This is the VDV Air Assault Platoon Blister for Red Dawn. Red Dawn adds Soviet airborne troops, the VDV, into Team Yankee. There was a lot of excitement when these were announced. There was also speculation about whether the figures would be metal, plastic or resin. Turns out, they're metal. Were they worth the hype? Stick with me and we'll find out. This is TSU-712, the air assault platoon blister for Soviet forces in Team Yankee. This blister is pretty plain. Mine came from the BMD air assault battalion box set, where you get two of these. I suspect the retail packaging of the standalone blister will be a bit more colourful when it's released. The blister contains 25 figures. The website says 25, the blister says 24, my fingers and toes say 25 when I counted them. That's enough to make a platoon of four AK-74 teams and three RPG teams, plus a formation command team. As I said, there was a lot of excitement when Battlefront announced they'd be adding Soviet Airborne to the game. The Soviet Union started experimenting with airborne troops in the 1930s. Despite some airborne operations undertaken in the early stages of the Second World War, most airborne forces fought as infantry. The Soviet High Command still envisioned airborne operations later in the war. However, after the failure of a badly scattered drop to seize a crossing of the Dnieper River, most airborne units converted to Guards Rifle Divisions. These were still highly trained troops and were often held back from general combat operations in order to exploit breakthroughs during offensives. Airborne forces were heavily restructured following the war, transferring from the Air Force to direct control by the Ministry of Defence as strategic forces. Soviet airborne troops saw action in Hungary in 1956 and Czechoslovakia in 1968. Following analysis of American helicopter-borne infantry operations in Vietnam, some VDV units reorganised as an experimental air assault brigade in 1973. The VDV also deployed airborne and air assault troops to Afghanistan during the Soviet-Afghan war in the 1980s. VDV were usually more heavily mechanised than their western counterparts, with many specially designed air transportable vehicles and heavy weapons. The Battlefront Air Assault Platoon infantry are metal figures. This came as a bit of a surprise, as thermoplastic resin is now Battlefront's preferred figure medium. But the rumour is the thermoplastic production facilities were busy making all those figures for late war bulge and Berlin Germans, so metal was chosen. No idea how true that is, but that's what I've heard. The figures are sculpted wearing the KLMK camouflage summer disruptive coverall and wearing berets. KLMK is a one-piece suit that's a green base colour with either tan or light grey coloured spots. The VDF uniform beret is sky blue. Battlefront recommends Vallejo 70841 Andrea Blue for this. There's a painting guide on page 82 of the Red Dawn sourcebook that covers both VDV and standard Soviet infantry. Let's look at the figures. The sculpts are nice and the figure detail looks good. These metal figures look a bit smaller and more delicate than the flexible Soviet plastic infantry you might be used to for Team Yankee. You get two officer figures armed with a pistol, plus a pair of radio men. There are four NCO figures in standing and kneeling poses urging the troops on their stands forward to glory. There are three figures armed with RPK-74s, long-barreled light machine gun versions of the AK-74. These are squad automatic weapons for the infantry stands. There are 11 riflemen in various poses, three with GP25 grenade launchers and another four who have RPG-18s. Finally, there's two kneeling and one standing RPG-7 figures. You'll need an officer, radio man and NCO for the three-hole command team base. This helpful diagram is available on the Team Yankee website. The RPK, GP25 and RPG-18 figures will go onto the four-hole infantry bases, no more than one of each on a base. 
The unit leader Stan substitutes an officer and radio man for the grenadier and the RPK gunner. This will make the leader stand easy to identify. The RPG-7 teams go on the two-hole small infantry bases. I'd use one of the NCOs here and a rifleman on each of the others. Then the remaining NCO and rifleman figures would fill out the open holes on the large four-hole infantry stands. You'll need all 25 figures. One blister will be enough to build an Afghansi VDV platoon and the smallest regular VDV company option but you'll need at least two blisters to make a medium-strength regular VDV company and three to make the full-strength version. How will they go on the table? As I mentioned, you get two options, the standard VDV and the veteran Afghansi VDV. Let's look at the Afghansi. The Afghansi BMD Air Assault Platoon are an infantry unit with the parachute special rule. This means those units can use the parachute deployment rules outlined in Red Dawn's Airborne Assaults. These are skilled veteran troops. All their stats are 3 plus. Courage, morale, skill and so on. They know what they're doing and are tough fighters. Soviet players will be tempted to take Afghansi VDV as their hit on 4 plus. This puts them on par with most NATO infantry. They get the standard 3 plus infantry save. Tactical move is 8 inches or 20 centimetres, with dash speeds up to 12 inches or 30 centimetres. The AK-74 assault rifle teams have an 8 inch or 20 centimetre range and a moving and halted rate of fire of 3. However, their pinned rate of fire is 1. The assault rifle AT is 1, with a 5 plus firepower. These teams are equipped with the RPG-18 for close-in anti-tank defence. Range on the RPG-18 is also 8 inches or 20 centimetres, so very close range. Rate of fire is 1 moving or halted, but the RPG-18 is slow firing, so you get a plus 1 to hit penalty if you fire it on the move. Anti-tank is 14 with a 5 plus firepower. That's better than nothing, and will prove useful in defensive fire if your infantry gets assaulted by tanks. But with these numbers it's going to take lucky shots to kill or bail and some heavier tanks will be unaffected. The RPG teams with your VDV get the RPG-7 or the RPG-7VR option. RPG-7 has a 12 inch or 30 centimeter range, moving or halted rate of fire 1, with an AT of 17 and a 4 plus firepower. However, this is also slow firing, so firing on the move gets the plus 1 to hit penalty as well. The RPG fires a heat warhead, so it is affected by special armour like ERA, BDD, bazooka skirts and so on. It also gets a special assault rating of 4. The upgraded RPG-7 VR has a lower range, just 8 inches or 20 centimetres. Plus it has rate of fire 1 and slow firing as well. But the AT jumps to 19 with a 2 plus firepower. It's a heat warhead, so is affected by special armour, except ERA. The tandem warhead rule lets the warhead ignore the effect of a target's ERA armour. Taking the VR option is a trade-off. You get less range, but more penetration and firepower. I wouldn't want to use tanks to close assault infantry armed with RPG-7 VR. So, how can you field VDV infantry? There are two new, dedicated VDV infantry formations introduced with Red Dawn. The VDV BMD Air Assault Battalion and the VDV Afghansi BMD Air Assault Company. The standard VDV Battalion formation has a HQ and two compulsory BMD Air Assault Companies. You can take an optional third BMD company, and all these can be BMD-1 or BMD-2. This BMD-2 Air Assault Company can have between 7 infantry stands and 4 BMDs, up to 19 infantry stands and 10 BMDs. There are also options for adding LMGs, AGS-17 grenade launchers and up to 2 SA-14AA missile teams, all in BTRDs. Optional units within this formation include artillery support with a BM-37 mortar platoon and a 2S9 Nona-S SP mortar battery. Anti-tank options include the ASU-85 Assault Gun Company, and you can have the BTR-RD, the anti-tank variant of the BTRD carrier. 
The formation also has organic recon elements with BRDM2s and anti-air with the BTRZD 23mm AA platoon. That's a pretty well-rounded formation with infantry, carriers, artillery, anti-tank, recon and anti-air all within the formation. If you add in a tank company as a support choice, that's quite a force. The VDV Afghansi formation has a similar overall structure, but is a smaller formation, an elite company rather than a regular VDV battalion. The Afghansi company loses the BRDM recon, but retains all the other support options from the battalion. At the company level, the Afghansi still get the option to add a PKM machine gun team, AGS-17 grenade launcher team, and an SA-14 Gremlin AA missile team to the company HQ for one point each. However, the veteran Afghansi troops come at a premium points-wise. And the platoons are small. Really small. No, I mean it. Even the largest Afghansi VDV platoon is only three rifle teams and three RPG teams. That's eight points. And not a lot of stands. You might need some other regular troops in support to back these guys up. So Red Dawn gives you the option to field a larger, regular VDV battalion size force, or choose to have a far smaller company level force of elite paratroops. I think a lot of people might be tempted by the Afghansi veterans 4 plus hit on rating. Soviet infantry that are hit on 4 plus have been on a lot of people's wish lists. But the small platoons will be fragile, so watch out for losses and morale tests. But either way, who can resist those blue berets? So, that's the VDV Air Assault Platoon Blister for Soviet forces in Team Yankee. These are nice figures, sculpted and cast in white metal. They will need a bit of clean-up and trimming, as most figures do. I really liked the flexible plastic Soviet infantry figures but these metal VDV figures look great. And I know some people just flat out prefer metal for 15mm figures. They're going to be very happy. Your main decision is going to be regular VDV or Afghansi. Afghansi will give you a smaller force, but the 4 plus base to hit is pretty attractive. There has been a lot of excitement around the Red Dawn and VDV release. I already have two painted companies of Soviet motor rifle troops, but I'm going to have to build and paint these up too. There is a Team Yankee tournament being rumoured for Western Australia in the first half of this year. How likely do you think it is I'm going to have these guys ready by then? Are you fielding VDV? Are you going regulars or the smaller elite Afghansi VDV? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.